One thing that people tend to often underestimate about me is the sheer number of anime that I've either missed out on, skipped over, or just plain passed up on. I mean, I guess it's true that I've got a decent number of series under my belt, but if I were to expose my watch list, the torches and pitchforks would likely come out before the 10th entry. I haven't even gotten around to the Helsing series yet. Hey, well, hold on now. See, this is why I wasn't going to say anything in the first place. But regardless, I still do have to give that little disclaimer because, well, as much as I hate to say it, we can't be right all the time. When it comes to predicting what's going to be a hit and what's going to flop, it's not unusual to make a bad call every so often. Sometimes the coach cuts the star player before they get a chance to display their full potential. Sometimes the audience votes off the contestant with the most talent. And sometimes, the recovering elitist sleeps on an absolute banger of an anime. I once accused Black Clover of being a poor ripoff and mashup of Naruto and Fairy Tail, and we will get to that, but after binging nearly the entire series in under a week, I think it's time for a review of opinions, if you will. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is, uh, as it pertains to my original judgments regarding Black Clover, I was wrong. Jesus Christ, I was wrong. I started reading this series when the manga didn't even have 100 chapters available just to see what the growing hype was about, and although I found it fairly enjoyable, definitely thought it was pretty derivative. Here, let's have a quick game of Guess the Anime. I'll give you some key details and you tell me, Naruto or Black Clover? Starting off, we've got a world where mastery over the power system basically makes you the head honcho, and in said world, our outrageously loud and obnoxious main character has zero talent for harnessing or using said superpowers, but decides that through sheer grit and hard work, they'll make it to the top and be respected throughout the land anyways. They're ostracized by their community and on top of having no talent, have no parents or blood relatives to speak of, just like their rival who has all the talent, plus a too cool for school attitude. They're basically the opposite of our main character in every way, but don't count out our main man just yet folks, because despite his lack of talent, what he does have is access to a rare and powerful yet ominous super ability that nobody seems to know much about, but can help him achieve his goals. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Like, my man really just copied the test answers and barely even put them into his own words. I mean, I understand paying respect to your influences, but this was damn near comical for somebody coming into the series, especially since the manga for Naruto had barely ended by the time Black Clover made its debut. I'd found it entertaining enough to keep reading when I had some free time, but with nothing really holding me to the series and with nothing that I could see that was fresh or innovative to really set it apart, I quickly ended up dropping it before the anime had even come out. And after hearing all the rumors of the <laughs> during the first few arcs, I will shamefully admit that I quickly adopted an I told you so attitude whenever discussions would come up. Even when the discourse started to shift towards a more positive direction, I'd already moved on and wasn't really interested in revisiting the series for any reason. Even though I knew things had gotten much better, I figured I'd already seen what the series had to offer, so there wasn't really a reason to go back to it again. Until recently, when I was looking for something to watch for an hour or two here and there during some downtime throughout the week. And yeah, it was a bit better than what I'd remembered, I, I guess, guess, but it was really more of the same until I'd reached episode 77. That was where I truly realized that this story was something special and absolutely more than some carbon copy of its predecessors. When it comes to themes related to inequality and the importance of hard work along with or even in spite of talent, there are definitely tons of shows with something to say, but I guess to me it really feels like Black Clover knows how to address these issues on an extremely personal level while also acknowledging the societal systems that keep these things relevant in the first place. It's also able to do so without coming off as preachy so much as inspiring though. It does this by showing characters actively going through things that force them to change how they think and perceive the obstacles in front of them in order to make it to the other side. The emphasis is on understanding the nature of the problem and putting it all on the table and then some in order to rise to the occasion by any means necessary yourself. It's about working to be the change that you want to see in the world and what being that change will actually demand of you. And this aspect of the story is something that truly shines this episode. 
At this point in the story, we're in the middle of the Royal Knight selection exam, and Noelle's team is up as the last match of the first round. Unlike her teammate and Asta's rival Yuno, most of her accomplishments and growth has happened away from the Clover Kingdom spotlight, especially as a member of the Black Bulls. So very few people apart from her squad mates actually know what she can do in combat. What makes sense then when her older brother comes to antagonize her before they begin their match on opposite sides of the battle. As a late bloomer to controlling her magic, Noelle was an outcast and an easy target for her siblings. She was written off as a failure, leading to her being assigned to the lowest ranking Magic Knight squad in an attempt to hide her away. Ignorant to her exponential growth over the past few months, Brother Dearest over here enjoys insulting her so much, it seems he'd rather be doing that than participate in the actual match. Once things actually kick off and they begin their assault, it seems as though he's successfully gotten into her head as her stubborn insistence on being the one to go on the offensive feels like an impulsive move. However, this is actually her first power play, as she realizes that she's the perfect bait for her brother, getting him to go off script and throwing their teamwork off balance. With Yuno, their strongest teammate guarding the crystal against a fellow member of Golden Dawn, who's also got his own vendetta, they actually are able to secure the advantage right out the gate. This last minute strategy of theirs proves even more effective than they could have hoped, since this gives Noelle and Yuno's third teammate N an opening to take out one of their opponents from the match entirely. Now, I got to take a second out to respect the homie N because he is easily one of the best characters in this entire series and definitely one of my favorites. His appearance is played up for laughs before the match begins as some sort of frail, nerdy shut-in type, but he's actually got a really passionate and fiery personality that makes him instantly lovable and endearing. After incapacitating his opponent, N continues to use his support magic for Noelle, but all he really uses it for is to encourage her. Everyone gets to see Noelle's brother be a complete tool to her, so instead of helping her fight him, he gives her the brotherly support that she should have gotten from her family and encourages her to handle things using her own strength, which was a script flip I was not expecting. Despite his appearance, my man N is extremely reliable. He's got 10 younger siblings that he's dedicated himself to support and gives Noelle one of the most heartwarming self-empowerment speeches I have ever seen in any anime. He stands up to her brother on her behalf, but only to tell him off. You know, brother to brother. He believes in Noelle and trusts her to have both the capability and the decisiveness to demand and command Solid's respect. Plus, unlike her brother, she's actually had her life placed on the line over and over and over again, to the point where she realizes her own family members that she's wanted respect from wouldn't be able to hold a candle to some of the enemies that she's had to deal with on the actual battlefield. It's a dope moment for her because all of a sudden we realize that we've come to a point where somehow along the way, she's left her goal of being acknowledged by her siblings behind and has been rocketing past it ever since. She's already been acknowledged by members of the other great noble houses as a true contender, and she's been relied upon by those same people in actual combat. This is just her first chance to display what she's been doing all this time on the grand stage. It's a win that she's been building towards all this time, but the climax of their encounter ends up being a complete anti-climax, and it's done this way on purpose. The ease with which she completely decimates her brother is proof of all the things I've been saying about her up until now. She's gone from being helpless to being in a completely different category, even apart from other nobles. Simultaneously, Yuno, who's guarding their team's crystal, is in a situation with really interesting parallels to Noelle's battle. As someone who grew up as a peasant with insane talent and abilities, all he knows is the importance of merit since he's got nothing else to fall back on. And since Golden Dawn is a squad of high status members and nobility, he sticks out like a sore thumb. So when he makes a tsunami-sized splash in this gold-gilded pond, his very existence confuses and disturbs the status quo that Golden Dawn itself represents in the Clover Kingdom. And despite the fact that the members of Golden Dawn give their lives to serve the kingdom, we can see through Yuno's opponent how that sense of duty can easily be warped into entitlement and obsession. They're so insulated that many of these nobles can't even conceive of anything outside of their worldview and think that just because they were born into comfort and grew to want something, that they deserve to have it. Yuno mentions as much as he reflects on his eventual victory in the next episode. Both Solid and Alectora hold themselves back because they've never had their worldviews challenged or had the thought to even examine it for more than half a second because they've never had to. 
Yuno know, takes advantage of this in an extremely precise way that strongly humbles his opponent while also making a very clear statement. He doesn't just destroy him, he targets his opponent's ultimate ability itself by neutralizing it in an extremely technical and unorthodox way without the aid of his ultimate trump card, ironically forcing him to realize where he actually stands in the world rather than the other way around. By beating him in this way, Yuno is basically yelling into his ear with a megaphone that he's nothing but an NPC in front of every magic knight in the entire kingdom. Damn. As far as tournament arcs go, it really doesn't get much better than this if I'm being completely honest. For me, a great battle series is found where amazing storytelling and dazzling visuals intersect, and there is just so much to love with Black Clover that highlights exactly that. There's a ton of care and detail that goes into the smallest aspects of the show that really get me right in the Kokoro, you know what I'm saying? There's so much that I could honestly go on and on about, like for example how Gordon's family is a reference to the Adams family with an accuracy that I can only describe as unnecessary in the most hilarious way possible. Or there's also the fact that y'all lied to me about this being some Mickey Mouse Clubhouse anime, this show gets dark towards the later seasons. All in all, I'm glad to say that I found a new favorite series, and although I got onto the hype train quite late, I'm just grateful that I eventually got on it all. Now if you'd be so kind as to surpass your limits preventing you from liking this video and subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. In the meantime, I have a new manga to catch up on. Peace.